Welcome to Releasing Trauma, a Survivor's Podcast. I am your host, Tracy Osborne. I am a survivor of emotional bullying, rape, sexual assault, domestic abuse, and grief. After losing my husband in 2019, I set off on a new adventure to help other women release their trauma and create a life they can cherish. Each week, I will feature a guest expert or a survivor to share their stories, tips, wisdom, and more. The goal is so that you can take away even just the smallest nugget of information you can use in your life right now to make a change and to remind you that you're not alone. There is life after trauma, and you can move from victim to thriver and create a life you can cherish. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the show. I am your host, Tracy Osborne. With me today is Sonia McCrimmon, and we are going to talk about a type of um, tool for therapy that you can use for your trauma recovery. It's called ACT, and I'm going to let Sonia explain it more as we get into the show. But Sonia, welcome to the show. I'm so happy to have you here. Hi, Tracy. Thank you so much for having me. So I always start out the show with having our guests tell us a little bit about their backstory. So tell us about you. Yeah, for sure. So I am a mindset and behavior change coach. And outside of coaching, I am also a board certified behavior analyst. Um, And so with that background, I did my master's in behavior analysis. And so with that background, I've really had a lot of knowledge and information related to evidence based strategies in behavior change. And that's really what brought me also into acceptance and commitment therapy which is ACT, which we're going to talk about today. And so before all of that, you know, my healing journey really started when I left an emotionally abusive relationship in my early 20s. Um, And then from there, I really began understanding more and more about myself and my upbringing and my relationships, my inner child, and really how my career shaped who I am today. Um, So yeah, that's a little bit about me. Awesome. So um, you have an extensive background in education here. Holy crap. I, I'm feeling <laughs> stupid now. Uh, <laughs> no, not at all. No, just kidding. Not at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but let's, so let's talk about acceptance and commitment therapy because this is a newer approach, but it's so powerful in helping people to combat their trauma. Yes, absolutely. So one of the big things that um, I really, really do love about this type of method um, to really process trauma and process, you know, difficult situations and challenges that we all face, you know, this method, acceptance and commitment therapy, it really is something that everybody can use. Um, And, you know, trauma, I feel like it's, it's a big word kind of nowadays, like everyone kind of uses it for a lot of things, but in all reality, there, there are so many different versions of trauma that we all go through to some degree and act is really an amazing way to work through it because it really allows you to bring that awareness and acceptance of the trauma And it does that really through psychological flexibility. So really allowing yourself to not try to get rid of or, you know, run away from or completely stop these feelings or thoughts because that we can't exactly do that. Like if I were to say, you know, if I were to say I really love pink sprinkled donuts and I keep talking about donuts to you right now, um, you're probably going to have donuts pop up in your head to some degree (laughs) and you're going to be thinking about certain things. But then if I were to tell you, you know, delete that memory, you can't. Right. And so that would actually make you focus on it more. Exactly. And so that's the whole component of act is really building that psychological flexibility to really expand your awareness of, you know, the surroundings of these thoughts and feelings. Like, what do you do before or after these thoughts and feelings come up? And really looking at that, because, you know, 
in behavior analysis, we really look at behavior change and what reinforces certain things in your life. And so if you kind of have a thought spiral, let's say of, you know, you get, you see something in your environment and that triggers a memory or that triggers, you know, anxiety to some degree, and then you start to dwell in it. You, you sit, you don't take action. You, um, you know, binge all of the TV, you isolate yourself, you know, all of those things, you just, you know, once that thought comes up, your immediate reaction is really, okay, now I go into distraction or isolating myself or dwelling in it. And that is the action you're taking when those thoughts and feelings come up. And so that just got reinforced by taking an action and kind of sitting and dwelling. And so that's a really big component of ACT where it gets you to bring awareness to what thoughts and feelings come up for you and allowing yourself to observe them and notice them objectively, like separate from yourself. And that's the flexibility component of seeing it, you know, yes, you've had experiences and yes, they are there and we work through those, but on a day to day, when things come up, it's really allowing yourself to see them as yes, they're going to come up no matter what you do. So it's okay. How can I, cause we can't control them. And so it's one of those things where it's like, okay, what can I do to manage myself in these situations? And then that's where act comes into play with a lot of diffusion techniques and um, a lot of different mindfulness techniques that are evidence-based that really can bring you through those motions safely and increase that acceptance of, yes, okay, it's there and let's work through it rather than just trying to either suppress or push down or say, you know, like, I don't want to have these feelings at all anymore, which in all honesty, like that's such a natural human response. Like, especially when it comes to trauma, of course, we want to just have it stop completely. We don't want it there anymore. And that is a very difficult process and it's really scary. And so one of the things, you know, when it comes to act and trauma is allowing that very, very small component of exposure along with building these different tools around how to manage it when it does come up, but really allowing it to go from flashbacks of trauma to distant memories, if you will. So it's, it's really allowing yourself to expand from it. Um, yeah. Wow. That's so when I first stumbled across act, <clears throat> excuse me, when I was doing some research, well, I was developing the trauma release method, which is acceptance, forgiveness, um, release and rewrite. Mm. And I was looking at the acceptance part and I came across act and I was like, yes, this is exactly what I've been saying is you have to accept your past. You mm-hmm. can't just shove it down and hope that it goes away because it's part of you. It'll never go away. Yes. Exactly. You have to accept that what happened happened. Mm-hmm. And that's like the number one step in healing from our journey or from mm-hmm. our trauma. Yeah. And so like, just to give context to the act process, there's six core components. And so really, um, contacting the present moment. So that's really, you know, meditation or mindfulness and certain Mm -hmm. things, but there's um, for instance, there's a strategy called dropping anchor and it's not only a meditation, but it's, there's three components of it, of acknowledging the thoughts and feelings that come up and then also connecting with your body in the moment. So literally moving your body um, and then also um, engaging with your surroundings. So actually like open your eyes and, and, you know, those five senses, like looking around and feeling things in your environment and noticing those things, because that in that component, one of the core things is really, you are in a physical body, you can control your actions of this body. And so when your thoughts and feelings come up, bringing awareness to it, and then getting back grounded and dropping anchor in the moment to get back into your 
body so that you can control those things and you can move your body. And so that's one of the processes is contacting the present moment. Um, And then acceptance, which is really opening up diffusion, which means that uh, to kind of watch your thinking, like noticing what kind of Mm -hmm. thoughts you're fused with. And so some of those are really like thinking about, do you have a lot of reason giving like, or rules where you're like, Oh, I have to do this because of X, Y, Z. Um, I should do this. I have to do this. Um, those are fusions with, you know, reason giving or rules. And then there's also fusion with the past, which is all the ruminating and worrying about like all the things in the past, but also uh, fusion with the future of all of those what ifs or, you know, fear of change, fear of the unknown. So that is all kind of encompassing in, your fusion with certain thoughts and beliefs. And so in the diffusion process of ACT, uh, there's so many different strategies, really cool strategies actually, uh, to help diffuse from that thinking. And then um, values are one of the huge first steps in ACT as well is knowing what matters, knowing what you, how you want to behave moving forward because that's your anchoring point essentially. That's, that's your redirection to know, you know, if you are, hitting a difficult situation, your values kind of realign you to say, okay, what kind of action can I take in this moment to move towards my value of who I want, who I strive to be? Um, And that ties into committed action, which is another one. And then the last uh, process is self as context, which is really having that flexible perspective taking, like looking outside yourself, looking at other people's perspectives, um, yeah. I'm over here talking and I'm on mute. I was going to say, I was like, <laughs> hello? <laughs> nope, I'm still here. I was just talking away. That's, that's a pretty powerful concept um, uh, that you just took us through. There's, um, you know, I like how ACT talks about those different, you know, your values and diffusion. And, um, you know, it really does give you back that control that, as trauma survivors, we desperately want to cling to, right? Mm-hmm. Um, something that you talked about, you know, in the very beginning that I wanted to touch on, you had mentioned that trauma seems to be kind of a catch-all phrase at this mm-hmm. point. <laughs> and I don't know that it's becoming a catch-all phrase as much as it is that we're finally becoming aware Mm-hmm. of the different types of trauma and how trauma can really affect us mm-hmm. um, because that's just recently within what the past 10 20 years that they've really been studying trauma and how it affects people yeah and and you know I I mentioned it in that way because I mean there's there's two sides of it I feel like you know society has either like overgeneralized it in some capacity to just like label things as trauma um and so you know that's why I kind of say it's a catch all but at the same time I do agree I I definitely do think that there's a lot more awareness and openness and and that ability to actually kind of name it for what it is and bring it into a perspective that we all go through it to some degree. And so I really love that it is become more of a, a a pronounced thing that we are able to talk about. And that's why I say, I do think it is quite a a spectrum of um, true what, what everyone goes through. And so, um, and that's the thing, like, I I don't take any of it lightly. Like I'm always so um, sure you know, accepting of whatever anyone kind of defines trauma for them. And, and that's the thing, there's so many different aspects of what trauma means to one person versus another. Um, But yes, we all definitely go through it to some degree for sure. Yeah. Everybody experiences trauma at one point in their life. And yeah, like you said, what, what one person constitutes trauma constitutes as trauma, another person, it may not phase them. Mm-hmm. yeah you know? exactly and so there are varying levels and act can work with all those levels <clears throat> or all the degrees of trauma it doesn't matter you don't have to go through it super horrible um auto accident or you know whatever 
it can be one of the little T traumas. Yeah, definitely. And that's the thing too, is like when I went through my ACT training, it specifically says in my training, do all of these things on yourself first. And I love that aspect as well, because I mean, obviously you have to implement it and utilize it, but I just really love that it's, it's such an open concept for anyone to apply to anything, not even trauma, like act can be utilized, um, you know, for building positive habits in your everyday and um, really looking at building positive relationships and setting boundaries. Like there's so many aspects that um, it can be utilized for. So I really love the, it's, it's complex in its creation, but at the same time, it's a very simplistic form of how to work through everyday challenges. So is this something that anybody can just learn for themselves or is it better to work with somebody who has been through the ACT program, the certification, um, and have them kind of guide you through it? Yeah. I mean, I think there's, there's definitely two ways. Like if someone is really um, excited to work through it on themselves. I mean, the happiness trap is one of the books that, um, really, Mm -hmm. uh, utilizes act and, and there's also a lot of worksheets and things that people can utilize. However, with that said, if you are unaware of certain thoughts or feelings that are guiding you into the direction that you are not aspiring to, then that is more where, having someone guide you through it is a lot more beneficial because having that third party eyes on your situations, if you will, um, really allows you to have that openness. And so, you know, in my coaching, it's all about like one example is the language and our self-talk. And I feel like that is one of the huge components that we don't realize in our own day-to-day of how much, we could put ourselves down just in the way that we talk to ourselves. And so that's one of the really big things that um, I notice, especially with um, my clients is, you know, they'll explain a situation, but there could be a lot of statements in there of, you know, I can't do it. And, you know, like I, I should have done it this way because X, Y, Z, and this person told me this. And so I really wanted to do it that way. And, and, you know, like there's certain things that you can sort of start to catch and notice that they might not be aware of in the moment. And so I do think guiding somebody through the various steps of act as a whole is really beneficial um, because there are certain things as you go on this journey that you're not aware of yourself until somebody else uh, brings it up to you. And then it's that glass shattering moment. Um, I always kind of um, say that the fun example of, you know, like, Oh, like, did you know that Bob like chews with his mouth open and he chews really loud. And it's like, next time you see Bob and every time he's with you, it's like all you hear is like the loud chewing. It's like once someone kind of tells you this certain thing that you're doing, um, it's, it's like, you can't unsee it. And you're like, Oh, Oh my gosh, I didn't realize I was doing that. And so it allows you to kind of catch yourself a lot more. Um, so having kind of those, that, uh, third party eyes to really guide you can be not to say, um, uh, what do you call like increase the process, like, uh, make the process, um, well, quicker. Not just, yeah. Like I don't want to necessarily say quicker, but it allows you to kind of come to those realizations in such a like aha moments, um, in such a bigger way when someone can guide you through that. Yeah. When you were talking about, um, you know, how it, it, when somebody points that out to you, then all of a sudden you start noticing. And I started thinking about when I was back in Toastmasters and they count how many ums and ahs and you know and all of that yeah. that we say. And you become aware of it and all, you're talking and all of a sudden you're just like, uh, oh crap, I said it. Yeah. Uh, oh crap, I said it again. You know? Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and it is exactly the same way. When I start working on my inner thoughts, and I start working on a particular one, um, it is all of a sudden it's like lights flashing and alarms going off. You said it again, you said it again, you said it again. And that way I'm able to quickly 
um, changed my thought process Mm -hmm. because it it does easy or come to me easier, not come to me easier. It's more noticeable faster than before. Yeah, exactly. And that's the thing too, like, you know, there's definitely, there's, I always say there, you know, you could, you could read all the books, do all the worksheets and, and do all those things. But if you're kind of taking in the information and then not actually implementing or knowing really where to start, that's kind of where that um, guidance can definitely come into play. Because I mean, years ago, all I would do is read all the self-help books, but it it, 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 mm-hmm. it didn't really hit home for me until I got my own life coach a year ago. And she just asked those, it, and that's what I love about coaching is because it seems like such a, you know, simple question or, or thing to ask, um, a client. And then, but it's that aha, like glass shattering moment of being like, Oh, I didn't realize that. Like for, ex- uh, for example, I love those. Yeah. Like for example, in, in a coaching context, um, I had a client that, you know, there's definitely like some people pleasing and, and trying to make sure that, you know, everyone else's needs were met and certain things like that. And, um, I started to notice through our coaching that, um, they would explain them over explain themselves a lot and, 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 you know, go the extra mile to continue to explain why they did a certain thing, a certain way. And that was, you know, kind of came out of this need for validation from the other person and, and to please them in the moment. And so as soon as I brought this up, I'm saying like, oh, I've just noticed that um, like you're explaining this um, a lot in the situation. And it was one of the, that was definitely a glass shattering moment for them. They were like, oh my gosh, I did not. Cause we had worked through um, a lot of those like people pleasing ways and stuff throughout our coaching. And when this kind of came about and I mentioned it, it was like that glass shattering moment of being like, oh wow. Okay. <laughs> and then I got messages later being like, I have caught myself so many times, like trying to over explain things. <laughs> and, um, and that's, that's the whole thing is once you kind of realize it, um, you can catch yourself and, you know, almost give yourself a replacement uh, behavior or replacement strategy to be like, okay, instead of doing that, I am going to acknowledge like what is coming up for me right now um, and process it in that way. Got it. This has been fantastic. Thank you so much for coming on. It's a lot to process, I know. So I want to go ahead and end it here because it's a lot for the listeners to kind of take in. Again, <laughs> that book that Sonia mentioned was is called The Happiness Trap by Russ Harris. It's a good book. I've got, I'm holding my copy in my hand right here. You can't see me, but I am. Um, and I'll put it down in the show notes too. So if you want to just go to the website and uh, releasingtraumapodcast.com pull up Sonia's uh, interview and here I go with the uhs. I, I'm like catching myself <laughs> <laughs> and um, you can get the book there. And Sonia, how can they find you? Yes. Yeah, so my main platform is Instagram. So you can find me at Sonia J Mac dot coaching. And I also have my website, www.soniamccrimmon.com. And those are the two main places you can find me. Fantastic. And those will also be down in the show notes as well. Thank you again for joining us and ladies listening in and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll talk to you next week on the show. Amazing. Thanks so much for having me. You bet.